Jerry Barton, Michael Cullen, our superintendent, are going to present 2023, 2024. Thank you, Mr. Sloan. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and present this budget to you. Um, you will recall that we started this process for the 22-23 school year, planning out the 23-24 budget back in November. We were using a lot of uh, factors when it came to creating a fiscally sound and appropriate budget for our, our taxpayers and for our school district. And, you know, we talked about a lot of factors during that time, um, everything from the economy, inflation, the cost of goods, supply chain interruptions, things of that nature. Um, but tonight, as you've seen throughout the course of the spring, what we're presenting to you is a budget that's both educationally and fiscally sound, um, and the budget that's going to reflect prudent financial planning and balancing the needs for our students, our instructional goals, and, and really is inclusive of ways to minimize the impact to our taxpayers. So we're very pleased and thankful for the efforts and hard work that Mr. Barno and several of the administrators have played in putting this budget together. And, and I'm pleased to report to the Board of Education and to our community that the budget before you tonight is below the tax cap, it has a minimal tax rate increase, um, you know, it's going to continue to maintain an enhanced program. It continues to um, serve our community through the bus replacement schedule. We still have a priority on school safety and student safety. And we're, we're putting a capital outlay project funds, excuse me, putting capital outlay project funds together for the second year in a row, dedicating those towards the high school library media space. So this spring, the propositions that the community is going to have before them will be to approve the budget, to approve the bus purchase plan, to approve the appropriations for our local libraries, and then to establish a new capital reserve for buses. As you know, this one is exceeded um, its life, and we're going to continue to move on because we found that the plan we have in place is the way to stretch our taxpayer and community dollars farther while providing our students with very safe, appropriate, and um, sound travel. So we're really excited to show you that budget to budget, our, our increase is about 3.62%. The actual change in the levy is 2.9%. And the estimated tax rate increase is 2.14%. And you can see under each of those categories um, the impact as compared to last year's budget. And again, as I talked about this year's process, we started officially back in November. But I think throughout the course of the school year and during the summer months, you'll understand that we have a, a dedicated focus on financial planning, and then we really start planning for our academic year and our fiscal responsibility the day after the budget vote. And we're very in tune with what our community's needs are, what our community can support, and also what we think is sustainable. Um, there isn't a thing that we try to implement without sustainability in mind. So the process that you see in front of you on the cycle really reflects a lot of input from all of our administrators, uh, you as the Board of Education, and certainly what we hear out in the community, our priorities for our, our taxpayers and our citizens. So this collaborative process really is um, fluid. It does really um, work to identify budget priorities as well as reductions. We know that if we're excessive, that that's something that our community won't support. So we're really trying to stay focused on, you know, a lean budget process, understanding that every year, invariably, there are going to be certain factors that are going to cause us um, to go out to the community with a tax 
rate increase, and we're trying to be mindful of that when we go out to the community. So we do look at revenue sources, we do look at state aid runs, and again, we do look at efficiencies. You know, so every every year we ask our administrators to go through a rehearsal process, and we, we start that in the fall, like I mentioned, and we give them scenarios and ask them to come up with creative ways to cut and, and send out programs that aren't being utilized, and then really think about ways that we might be able to capitalize on extending process. So this year, specifically, um, we're about to engage in a construction project, and as you know, we've, we've utilized our capital reserve for that. Um, we've used federal grant monies, and the things that are in front of you on the screen are really dedicated towards uh, providing our community with state-of-the-art facilities while having zero impact on our, our taxpayer or zero percent increase to our taxpayer, I should say. So the elementary and high school HVAC process is already underway. People that come in for both might notice some ceiling tiles that are missing. Uh, that's not due to neglect, that's due to the ongoing work to make sure that all three of our buildings are eventually climate controlled so that our students don't have to sit there um, in unbearable conditions. Some of you heard me say that this morning Gary and I were on the maintenance roof um, inspection. We walked that with Elmer Davis to just make sure that the, the work was satisfactory before they issued a warranty to us. I'm pleased to say that I think that, that roof came out really, really well and that for the foreseeable future I don't anticipate any issues with that. Um, the rest of the stuff on there is part of the 2021 capital outlay project and I will be reporting to the Board of Education in the near future on uh, what that proposed schedule will look like. We had a kickoff meeting yesterday with our construction team and I anticipate that you're going to see construction trailers showing up in the near future. And again, that's all part of the 2021 capital improvement project and that is something where we're utilizing the capital reserve funds um, and moving forward with trying to upgrade and update our facility and provide our students with the very best. And one of the things that you'll notice um, really soon, again, is going to be a concession stand with restrooms attached to it outside, something that I think has been long overdue. So that work I'm really excited to see take place. So the next piece would be, again, trying to keep our community informed about everything that's happened. I know at least once a month for the past several months you've been hearing us give budget updates. Um, so we're going to get out here and now take our show on the road. Uh, we were out last year, we did a few presentations to the public. We anticipate doing that same thing again. We'll have a meeting set up with our town supervisor just so that we can promote the school budget and what we plan to do with taxpayer funds to the majority of our stakeholders. Um, in addition to that, there is a binder that's located in each of the offices that highlight the budget. So if taxpayers want to come in, take a look at what we dedicate our funding to, they have the opportunity to do that. Those binders are also located in our public libraries. Um, they're listed here on the website, and then shortly there will be a community newsletter that goes out just to kind of highlight everything that we've been talking about for the last several weeks. And I know that I'm giving the general overview, and Gary will give some of the specificity, um, but before I turn it over to him, I would just ask if there are any questions of me or Gary before I do turn it over to him for some of the specifics. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Poem. Okay, so uh, next slide, please.
So uh, the good news here is that there are no surprises with this budget. And um, I just want to say, looking out, since this is a, uh, a budget hearing, that um, the audience um, and the board, I think uh, pretty much everyone here has seen all these slides. So there, there are no real new slides. The numbers haven't changed. This is the budget. Uh, the appropriation side on the right hand side um, is, is our budget and what the public will vote on um, on May 16th. So, um, so this, this is it. Uh, this is the same budget that the board adopted on April 13th. So um, this is for the public, basically. And so since um, the, the board and the members here in the audience have seen this, I will spend a great deal of time, but if anyone has questions or, or comments, they, you know, we, we can always uh, entertain those. So uh, this is the slide we've seen before. We saw it in the first presentation in March and the second, and then with the uh, April presentation. So uh, what I'd like to uh, point out here is every budget has to be supported entirely by our revenues. They're not, and we try to be conservative, both on the appropriation side and on the revenue side. So uh, we know our, our history on the revenue side, which really um, dictates the, the, the limit that we can go on our spending, right? It really has to be supported by revenues. And we, we have some mechanisms to um, shake that balance up a little bit through the use of fund balance and reserves. What we, uh, I'll show you a slide on, on the revenue, just how those compare from one year to the next. But here we are with a, with a sound, prudent, balanced budget. So here is that revenue budget, and I start with this first. This is not the budget the voters vote on, but we know that appropriation, their expenditure side of the budget, has to be supported by these revenues. So here they are outlined in the ma major categories anyhow. And just to point out here, nothing, not, none of the numbers have changed from what we've seen before. State aid and property taxes, that's 90% uh, uh, over 90% of our, our budget right, right there. So uh, state aid is about two thirds of supporting our budget and property taxes about a third. And here I'll point out um, how we reduced our reliance somewhat on our fund balance and reserves from last year. We're down a total of seventy-five thousand, and that's a pretty pretty good uh, thing to do. Last year we had increased our reliance on reserves to support the, the current 22-23 budget. For 23-24, that reliance um, on our reserves and fund balance will go down a little bit. It does. Uh, our reserves to help balance our budget. And we've looked at some of the detail of those reserves that we are using. Okay, so here is our 23-24 uh, proposed budget, $34,710,447. Uh, so that, as Mr. Pullen has pointed out, a 3.62% increase in the budget. Um, and we've talked about the process. I've mentioned it in prior me meetings that uh, in a year where we saw our consumer price index and inflation go up around 8%, we've held this budget down. It was a lot of work. Um, and uh, thankfully, some of those major cost factors were, were uh, controllable within our budget. So uh, this budget is broken down into these seven categories. And we'll take a, a, another quick look at each of these categories. So here's just a side-by-side -side, uh, current year versus next year's proposed budget and the overall changes. Again, the overall change is 3.6%. And then each of these major functional groups, that's, um, that's how they compare with the prior year. I will say that the largest dollar amount is in the instruction area, as it should be. Okay, a quick look at the first uh, functional area of general support. And each of these functional um, areas are broken down, and we have six major categories under the support budget. The 
essential services is the biggest part, 60% of the general support. There are salary uh, lines uh, throughout each of these functional areas. There's, there's money, uh, some money in each of these areas for department equipment purchases and supplies and so forth. Instructional budget, uh, we heard from Ms. Pagliotti on some of the highlights of that budget. And those are all the changes. Adjustments here and there uh, from the instructional budget. Uh, but nothing too major there. The transportation budget is going up by 275000 That is to accommodate our huge increase that we didn't have in, in the current year budget, mostly for uh, increased fuel costs. So, and, and all throughout the budget, the, uh, it, it does take into account contractual increases for, for salary costs. So, actually, if you just take that, that's roughly 3%, that almost equates to, to the overall increase in our budget. And um, I'll just point out, we went back to the overall slide that over 70% of our budget is salaries and benefits. So we are a people organization, as I usually say. So that's often what drives our budget increases from one year to the next. Again, uh, just some details on the bus purchasing plan. That is proposition number three. We are planning on uh, purchasing five new buses for 2324 and retiring six, just to reduce our, our fleet by, by one vehicle. And we, we know we, that we currently have the current capacity to do that. We get a, a, a nice uh, trade-in value on those buses since we are on a five-year cycle. So that's a, a great uh, position for the district to be in. Okay, again, uh, the bus purchases have come uh, out of our bus purchase reserve fund which uh, we utilize that every year, and then we um, do what we can to replenish that reserve. And that's uh, got, a, got a pretty nice uh, balance in it right now, a healthy balance that keeps us going. The community service budget, a uh, very small part, but an important part of the, the budget. That's mainly for our school safety, security, and some of the community um, uh, areas, such as the pool, golf, So um, on the benefits, uh, we've talked a lot about this. Some of the benefits and retirement and, and health insurance costs are uh, normally big cost drivers for any school budget. We're, we're fortunate to have those kept in, in check for this year. So uh, a fairly modest increase in overall benefits of 4.5%. Here's the debt service section of, of the budget. Very little change there. Debt service represents the bond principal and interest payments that we make on our borrowings or that, that we um, incur to finance our capital projects. And that, that expense is offset by um, building aid. And let's say our uh, the functional uh, group, our income transfer budget, uh, that contains three line items uh, transfer for uh, the school food, food service fund, which we've been doing for years, but uh, we're not, um, we don't really need to do that for 23-24. We've got a, uh, an actual surplus of fund balance, and so we're, we're able to cut that back uh, for the 23-24 to zero. The transfer for special aid fund, that really covers uh, the local share of our uh, handicap program over the summer. And then we're, uh, we have $200,000 uh, budget for our capital outlay project. And there's still uh, legislation um, pending for, for those outlay projects to go up to $250,000. So, so we're hopeful for that. So each of these presentations have kind of ended with the, um, the budget timeline. We really didn't start
start this back in November, as Mr. Cullen uh, stated. We have a variety of um, multiple budget presentations throughout the year. So here we are in the highlighted area. Today's the, the required budget hearing. So uh, the board can take any comments on the budget. And then the public will uh, hopefully a good turnout for, for this uh, budget and vote on the 16th. Linda, do you have anything to report for correspondence? Yes. For the elementary school, I do have something to report. Uh, there's always something interesting and great going on at the elementary school. Uh, they recently had their community fair and literacy night, and over 125 people attended that. And they had 20 community partners there as well. The grade level teams each made a raffle basket that they donated for families to win during that night. And then in addition to that, uh, the Booster Club has sponsored this Scholastic Book Fair again, and it was the best one that they had yet. Uh, ELA and math tests were completed with 98% of the students taking them on computers this year. And coming up, fourth graders for Memorial Day We'll be placing flags on graves of veterans and cemeteries throughout the district as they have in the past. And Memorial Day Parade will be held the Friday prior to Memorial Day uh, at the Rose Town Hall in North Rose, weather permitting. And uh, coming up later uh, in June, there will be the Festival of the Arts and their Spring Award Ceremony. And that's what I have. Thank you, Linda. Paul, do you have anything from Winston? Yeah, a couple of announcements. On the 17th of May, we're going to have a uh, concert. And I think it's, it's uh, also, I think, an art showing. Is that right, Scott? Art and concert? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, following shortly after that, there's going to be a parent and student night where the parents and students can go to the middle school and, and uh, have, they can ask questions and have a presentation about the classes which are going to be offered at the middle school next year. Thirdly, the band is going to have a trial at the middle school, which again, parents and students can come to that. And they can get to work with their instruments and see if they're interested in the band and again, uh, have a trial. Now, the other thing that would be under good news, so let me wait for that. Okay, Mr. President? Thank you. Um, Tina Reed? High school's been busy as usual. National Honor Society hosted their second blood drive April 26, collected 33 units, which equates to helping 87 people. Thirteen students competed in the Enviroton. Enviroton, yeah, I said that right. Competition April 27th, the event sponsored by the Wayne County Soil and Water District, and they're dealing with different environmental and conservation educational topics and results are pending. It's a competition, so the results are pending and eagerly waiting to see how we did. On April 20th, seven students competed in Future Business Leaders of America competition in Rochester that involved during presentations and taking exams. Uh, a number of our students placed in categories that don't have individual, but that will come up later. I think they went through that themselves. I would have to steal the phones. AP exams are administered this week. They're hopeful with those. Junior ball was April 29th. Senior prom is May 6th. So everything's coming up. On May 1st, we had Decision Day, where recognized seniors and have their postgraduate plans are highlighted. Could be college, military, workforce, whatever each of them is doing, and that's always a real plus. And then the last thing, the cabaret is 
May 5th for musical performances. Linda, do you have anything from Fort County? Yes, I do. I know we've all gotten the bulletin and notification that Fort County's annual meeting is going to be May 23rd at Club 86. And um, Billy Green Jr. is the New York State Teacher of the Year. He will be the featured speaker after the dinner and the business meeting. So uh, the time is right to get your reservations and it should be a very interesting and informative uh, program. And of course, every year part of that is also students come and do uh, musical performance uh, before dinner time as well. Just a reminder. Oh, and next, next Saturday, the legislative committee will be meeting. Buildings and grounds met on April 26th. Uh, we discussed uh, multiple different ways to improve efficiencies identified uh, severity of some things that needs to be taken care of throughout the district. And uh, it's an ongoing effort just to uh, get everything where it needs to be. Uh, district Safety Committee also met on April 26th. I was unable to attend that. I got an overview of uh, all the buildings and grounds uh, inside and outside, uh, how progress is being made in regards to uh, improving the safety for our students. Staff, uh, and I had a demonstration on some new technology that's uh, out and about for different school districts. Um, I have nothing on the ALC and the policy committee, Paul. Surprisingly, nothing in this board meeting. Public access to the board. Tina, do we have anybody that signed up for public access? No, we do not. Perfect. Here we are at the consent agenda. I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. John, second, Tina, <clears throat> all in favor? Motion is passed. That takes us through page three. Paul's favorite part, great news. Yeah, I've got quite a bit of good news. Actually, I'm going to continue with middle school good news. 54% of the middle school is on the honor roll of I. I think that's just awesome. Enough. It's also quite consistent, though. I know I've been watching the high school. Generally speaking, 50% of our students are on the uh, Additionally, well over 150 of the students have received Cougar Ops passes. Now, interestingly, we, we don't get those, but the Cougar Ops pass has some criteria. One of it, it has to be 85, your grades have to be at 85 or higher. You also have to have an 85% attendance. Uh, thirdly, of course, you know, no referrals. And then number four, uh, no orange passes, which means I think that's for the timeout. So, you know, obviously a clean record. And a lot of students are, are getting those. Um, speaking of referrals, um, I know you can, you can look at those in different criteria, but I think statistically significant is the fact that uh, last year at this time, the middle school had 1,400 referrals. This year they have 450. So that's a, lot, a drop of almost 1,000. So even if you wiggle the criteria, I think that's pretty dramatic. The only other good news I have is our baseball team say no. Um, share another good news. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, new members into the Athletic Hall of Fame. They were inducted. Um, I'm not sure what the date is, but it, it was about a week ago. Um, and the new members include Greg Mills, Kathy Hoyt, Patricia 25, and Ron B. I have some as well. Uh, Nolan Sears, a uh, college student, was elected to the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. Uh, we had uh, a picture in the Lakeshore News of 20 of our high school students at Optimax in Ontario doing a career talk. And uh, Linda Edgar, our Linda Edgar on the board, was elected to the BOCES board. So, 
congratulations to you for that. And we also, in our uh, consent agenda, I think it could be appropriately honored is uh, we had four teachers given tenure, which is always a good thing. And I did, uh, there was a face, and I don't know the details, maybe Mr. Pullen does, but our fourth graders had a competition for voting for a school district, and there were a number of school districts, uh, like four or five of them, and we came out with the most votes. You don't want to vote. Oh. But we won 300 bags of chips of some type. Well, I better get at least a few of those. <laughs> well, I, I asked a certain relative of mine if, what they were going to be used for, and she didn't know, but she knows she had two bags a day. So. And the, the one thing in the, the budget I think we should make note of is that with our new process that we've had this, for the second year, we the reason for no questions is because we've had questions before, and we've done this for a number of months, and I think we don't know the budget the same as Gary does and, and, and Mr. Pullen, but uh, we've had a good exposure to the budget, so we didn't need to ask a bunch of petty questions. So I, I think we, in a world that's worthy of it, and the bathrooms, um, and uh, it, the bleachers will be handicapped accessible. Uh, and I think that's a major, major thing. It, just that one little thing in that one area uh, brings us up into modern days, shall we say. So, so thank you for the budget the work that all of you did. That I, we, I appreciate it. I know how hard it is. Thank you. I think one more thing that we would probably like to say is um, it is National uh, Teacher Appreciation Week, and we really do appreciate all of our teachers. Um, it's one of the hardest professions that you can have, especially in this day and age. Um, and so we really appreciate all of, all of you. So thank you. I second that. One thing that I did failed to stop at were board member requests, comments, and discussion. Did anybody have anything that they wanted to discuss? I guess it's time for adjourn. Motion to adjourn. John and Shelley. All in favor?